Hi there, marketing research students. In this quick video, we're going to show you a quick and dirty way to analyze the results of an experiment that you conducted inside of Qualtrics. This is not a sophisticated analysis. So I have designed an, an experiment in Qualtrics called the Apple experiment. It's a very simple two by two experiment. If we go to the default question block here, we'll see that I have four questions, one, two, three, four, where each question presents an image of an apple, and then it says where the apple was sold. And then based on those presentation, those presented items, the respondent is asked to answer what the highest acceptable price for this apple uh, would be while still considering it to be a good value. And the response range was from 25 cents to $2. It's a two-by-two two experiment because the first variable was where the apple was sold, whether it was Whole Foods or Walmart. The second variable was the labeling on the apple, either no label, the control, or an organic sticker. That makes it a two-by-two two with four options. It was a between-subjects experiment, meaning each respondent only saw one version of this apple. We used inside the block designer the question randomization to tell Qualtrics to only present randomly one of these four options to each person. About 70 people have taken this experiment. If I go to my results under the View Results tab, and I go to the Download Data button, for quick analysis, I can easily export this data into a CSV file which opens natively in Excel easily. And here's the request being processed by Qualtrics. It'll take a few moments. Here's my CSV file. Okay. My data set is opened. The first row represents the variable names, so V1 to V10. Here's the four questions that were presented. Uh, one of the questions were pre presented to each person regarding the apple. I can tell that these four questions were are the ones that represent the actual apple experiment results because I can see here that for each person, each row here representing a single respondent, only one response exists. In other words, these three options were not shown for this person, but this apple was. So this person answered the how much they were uh, the acceptable price for the apple in the Walmart WM uh, version where the apple was organic. Since we have all the data in four columns, that would mean I can scroll to the bottom here and simply take the average. Oops. I have the average for column one. I can scroll over. Now I have the average for column two, the average for column three, and the average for column four. And it goes Walmart, Whole Foods, Walmart, Whole Foods. I'll type that here. Walmart. It's CNT for control, CNT for control, org, org for organic. So we'll call that control, control, organic, organic. And then we'll take the values and just drag them. Shouldn't change them if we just drag them carefully. Below, this is the native structure that Excel likes to see the data in when you want to make a chart. You can always do it the other way, but you just have to do a lot more tweaking. And I'm going to make a simple 2D chart here. And quickly, cleanly, and easily, it presents the results of my experiment. At a glance here, we can see that the organic Whole Foods version of the apple had the highest average value reported. Now, <clears throat> let's be careful here. 
we did not conduct any rigorous statistical analysis. We are not, at this stage, not testing to see if there's a statistically significant difference between these values. A one-way ANOVA would be appropriate to uh, test these more rigorously. So let's be careful about making any broad conclusions at this point. However, it is instructive and interesting to look at these values here at, the, at least the surface level, and at least some of these conform to what we might be, have our expectation to be. We should still give this a nice title. And on the y-axis, we may want to consider creating some values that give this a more meaningful label for interpretation. For example, what does 4 and 5 stand for? Well, we would have to go back to our survey and remind ourselves what these values actually corresponded to. So a value of 4 actually corresponded to the respondent answering with a value of $1. 5 corresponds to $1.25, so on. So to interpret this in a more meaningful way, we could say here people are willing to spend a little more than a dollar on average, whereas down here there's some value less. So we could actually map these values back onto how they actually responded, adding to the quality of the interpretation. Depending on how you designed your experiment in Qualtrics, the data that you need to take averages of to present the results may not be presented to you in four unique columns. There may be other ways you have to extract the data. But in most use cases, this approach will be sufficient. Good luck, everybody.